Hey everybody, Captain Beanard back here with another Wi-Fi battle. Today we have a battle against Zeline, and as you can see, she has a very cool team there. Pretty original, which is of course what I like to see from the game. So it should definitely be another good one, and we're gonna get into it. So, looking at her team, I was thinking she was definitely going to want to lead with the Hippowdon to get the Sandstorm up early. This definitely looks to be a sand team of sorts, so I decided to lead with my old pal Scissor, the Claw, as she does end up leading with the Hippowdon. And, of course, the Sandstream is going to activate to create a Sandstorm on the battlefield. And, of course, I am going to go straight for the Mega Evolution into Mega Scissor. And I do outspeed this thing, so I'm just going to go straight for a Bug Bite to get as much damage as possible. It does take her down by about a third, which was nice. And she is going to go for the Stealth Rock in return to get the Entry Hazard set up on my side of the field early. So I'm just going to go for another Bug Bite here. I know it's probably not going to KO, but I don't sense any real danger from this thing. As she does survive that attack in the red and go for the yawn in return, which is of course going to put me to sleep next turn if I don't switch out. So I don't want my scissor to go to sleep here, so I'm going to switch out directly into my Gastrodon Gary. I'm going to take some damage from the rocks as she actually decides to switch out as well directly into her Steelix. And then I am going to regain my health back with the leftovers. So... This turn she is going to go straight for the Mega Evolution into Mega Steelix. And I am going to outspeed her again, which was nice. I'm going to go for a Scald. I know it's probably not going to KO, but I am hoping for a Burn, which unfortunately I do not get. But I do take her down by a little more than half, which was nice. She is going to go for the Earthquake in return, which is going to take me down by a little more than half as well. And then I am going to regain some health with the Leftovers. So, she is going to go for the switch this turn. No, she can't survive another attack, so she's going to switch in directly with Gastrodon, probably hoping for another Scald, uh, probably has Storm Drain, wants to get that activated, but I decided to go for the Earth Power instead, just in case she decided to switch, which does take her down by about a third, which was nice, and then we are both going to regain some health from our leftovers. So, I'm going to go for the Recover this turn, not sensing any real danger from this thing. I want to get myself back up to full health to try and stay healthy, which I do. She is going to go for an Ice Beam in return, which is only going to take me down by about a quarter, which was not too bad. And then I am going to regain even more health with my leftovers, as she also regains more health with her leftovers. So, I'm going to go for the Switch this turn. I do want to try and conserve my Gastrodon, as it does look pretty useful. Um, against her team, so I'm going to switch in with my Cryogonal Uka Uka and take some damage from the rocks, as she is going to go for an Ice Beam yet again, which is not going to do hardly anything to me. I am max special defense with an Assault Vest, so then I am going to take some Sand Damage as she does regain more health with the Leftovers, and this turn she's going to go for a Protect just to stall out another turn of uh, sand damage and leftovers recovery as well to scout me. I did go for the freeze dry, hoping to catch her off guard there, but not going to do anything. That is going to be it for the sand as she does regain more health with the leftovers. So this turn she is going to go for the switch, seeing as how I did reveal freeze dry. No way she is going to stay in. So she is going to switch back into the Hippowdon, basically as fodder and also to get the uh, sandstorm up once again. I am just going to go for the freeze dry which is going to be more than enough to finish off the Hippowdon, dropping her down to 5 Pokemon, and then I am going to take more damage from the Sand. So, then she is going to come in with Nidoking, and that is going to force me to switch. I don't want to get taken out by this thing, so I'm going to come in with my Gastrodon yet again, and take some damage from the rocks, as she does go for the Flamethrower. So, uh, not going to do a whole lot there. And then I'm going to regain more health with the leftovers. So, she is going to go for the switch again. This turn doesn't want to lose her Nido King, so she's going to switch back into the Gastrodon. And uh, I'm just going to go straight for the Earth Power here, and that is going to take her down a little below half, which was nice. And then I'm going to regain more health with the leftovers, as she is also going to regain some health with the leftovers. So, 
This turn I decide I am just going to stay in and try to uh, whittle this thing down even farther. I go for another Earth Power, but I actually end up getting a crit, which was awesome. That is going to finish off the Gastrodon and drop her down to four Pokemon, so uh, pretty lucky there on my side. And I am going to regain even more health with the Leftovers. So this turn she is going to come in with Torterra, and I am going to decide to switch here. I'm not sure if I'm going to outspeed this thing or not, and I don't want to risk it. So I'm going to switch back into my Cryogonal and take more damage from the rocks as she actually double switches me here. Not exactly sure why, but she's going to come back in with the Nido King, and then I am going to take more damage from the sand. So this turn, she is actually going to go for the Earth Power. I'm not exactly sure why, if she was predicting a switch or she forgot about my Levitate ability, but either way, that's not going to do anything to me. I am going to go for the Ice Beam in return, which is going to be enough to one-shot kill the Nido King, dropping her down to three Pokemon as I do take more damage from the Sand. So then she is going to come back in with Steelix. And she's just going to go for a Protect here to stall out another turn of Sand Damage, most likely. I'm just going to go for an Ice Beam, so not going to do anything there. And I am going to take more damage from the Sand, leaving me with 25 health in the red. So this turn, I am just going to go for an Ice Beam, hoping to take this thing out. Unfortunately, she does survive that in the red. Goes for the Heavy Slam, and that is going to be more than enough to finish off my Cryogonal and drop me down to 5 Pokemon. And that is going to be it for the Sandstorm. So, then I'm going to come in with my Tapu Koko, Aku Aku, here to try and avenge his brother. And uh, I am going to get the Electric Surge to set the Electric Terrain on the battlefield. And here I actually decide to go for the Defog. I don't really have any good attacking moves for this thing. And I really do want to get the Stealth Rock off my side of the field, as it does do considerable damage to my team. So... I am going to get rid of that, but she is going to go for an Earthquake once again, which is going to be enough to one-shot kill my Tapu Koko and drop me down to four Pokemon. So uh, both of the uh, Tiki brothers uh, getting taken out by the Steelix here, but that's okay as I am going to come in with my Gengar Spooky, go for the Shadow Ball, and that is going to be more than enough to finish off the Steelix, dropping her down to two Pokemon. So, then she is going to come in with the Crocodile and get the Intimidate to lower my attack. Not really going to matter since I am a special attacker. I do outspeed this thing, so I'm going to go for the Dazzling Gleam, which is going to knock this thing into the red, but it does survive and go for a knockoff in return. But luckily, I am carrying the Focus Sash, which is still intact, so I am able to survive that hit. So, this turn, she is going to go for the Switch. Doesn't want to get taken out by another... Dazzling Gleam, so she's going to switch into the Torterra as I do go for it yet again, so not going to do much of anything there. So this turn I am just going to go for the Shadow Ball to try and get some damage on this thing before I go down. It does knock it down to about half, and I do get the special defense drop, which was nice, but she is just going to go for the Earthquake in return. Unfortunately, as of Gen 7, Gengar no longer has Levitate, so that is going to be more than enough to finish off. Uh, poor old Gengar, and drop me down to three Pokemon, as that is going to be it for the Electric Terrain. But that is okay, I am just going to come back in with my Scissor. I am going to outspeed this thing and go straight for a Bug Bite, which is going to be enough to finish off the Torterra, dropping her down to just one Pokemon. So, finally, she is going to come back in with Crocodile, and she is going to get the Intimidate to lower my attack. Not really going to matter, though, since she is still within range. I am just going to go straight for a bullet punch, and that is going to be enough to finish off the Crocodile. And that is game. So, I won that one 3-0 against Zeline, but that was a pretty interesting match. Thanks for watching again, everybody. Hope you all enjoyed. Please hit that like button, leave a comment, and or subscribe if you did enjoy and stay tuned for more new battles in the future. So that's it, and we'll see you next time.